Hey guys, and welcome to Happy, Sad, Confused. Happy July 4th, guys, if you're downloading this on July 4th. Otherwise, I sound insane. Oh my God, happy July, happy birthday, America. Happy birthday, America. Uh, I'm Josh, that's Sammy. Yeah. That's not me doing a voice. What, what if that was revealed? <laughs> the whole time, it's just been like this really weird character that you do. <laughs> yeah, notice we never speak at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm perpetuating madness and sanity. Um, yes. Everyone should see the puppet that you made. <laughs> the Sammy puppet, yeah. yeah. Um, this week on the show, this is history. This this is what, I don't want to like, you know, overstate this, but we've kind of... This changes everything. Changes the world. <laughs> Brexit, eat your heart out. Yeah. Um, Anna Kendrick is the guest, and that marks a, uh, a three-timer. Not one, not two, but... Three times. It wasn't so long ago that we were only doing one-timers. Not only were you only doing one-timers, it was something that you were like, really I was debating. About. I was. Yeah, it wasn't like a Look, light decision. Guys, I wrestle with the show. I think about what the identity should be, what the format should be. Right. So you were big on like, I think I'm only going to have people on once. Unless you're Anna Kendrick, and then it's unlimited. No, that first it was Miles Teller. Miles Teller was the first... Uh, to Peter. Yeah, but he was like two and a half or one and a half. Right. This is full on. This, this is, is this yeah, is full the on. Whole Look, little. everybody likes Anna Kendrick. Everybody loves Anna Kendrick. She's got a lot to say. She's got a lot to say. She's got six movies out this year. We just did the math right before we started here. Who's busier than Anna Kendrick? Nobody. Um, that being said, we actually talk about um, at the outside of this podcast. I, I I mentioned how odd it is that she has nothing coming up. I.e., she's not actually scheduled to shoot anything. Uh, and part of that reason for that is that she's been working on her book. So next time she's on the podcast, which will probably be in yeah. two to six weeks, who knows? But um, what? Please, she's always welcome. Uh, she's got uh, her first book. So she, uh, it's called Scrappy Little Thing. Oh. Uh, and it's like a collection of like I think little essays and stuff. Uh, we actually talk about it quite a bit in this podcast uh, because we've talked about everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's a nice little sneak peek at the at the book and the subjects that she tackles and her process and how difficult it was. And uh, I think it's gonna be. I mean, of course, it's gonna be really funny. Yeah, she's, she's super adorable. funny. We, we love her. We, I mean, she's she's wonderful in film. She's wonderful in 140 character bursts on mm -hmm. Twitter, and she's wonderful in 45 minute conversational she's podcast in form. Music and music and film and television she does it all wow oh man wow uh, she's i feel useless <laughs> <laughs> yes uh she uh is promoting mike and dave need wedding dates which is a super raunchy uh new comedy Does people say raunchy anymore now okay it just happens it's got it's full on raunch mm -hmm. um <laughs> dead on the raunch scale <laughs> the raunch scale raunch, 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 raunch. um very funny movie though i will say that uh you can always tell if i don't like a movie because i'll just say it exists as opposed to uh, mm. me actually liking it a little a little hint into yeah, the there's, yeah, terminology. There's, you knew that secret already mm -hmm. um no this is actually a very funny movie it's uh her uh zach efron aubrey plaza uh and adam devine is she with uh, Zach or Adam? She is. Uh, they. Uh, she and Zach are co are, uh, oh. are love interests for each other, and uh, and they're good together. And um, actually, I'll, honestly, all four of them are great. So um, definitely check check out that movie. It's kind of an antidote to the summer blockbusters of the season. Um, there's actually a lot of cool different kind of non blockbustery stuff out there. Um, I've just, I, uh, you know, last week on the show, we of course had uh, Nicholas Winding Refn um, uh, of Neon Demon fame. Uh, there's also Swiss Army Man with our mm -hmm. buddy Daniel Radcliffe. The uh, one and only. Yeah, which I just saw um, for the second time recently and uh, is really good, really unique. And, Based and, on you, right? Yeah, the, the farting corpse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I started life as a farting corpse. Um, <laughs> but it's a very uh, a unique movie and I think um, uh, uh, we'll have a long shelf life. I think it's a movie that um, people will be talking about for a while. Uh, you were going to say something else. I yes. love what Daniel Radcliffe's done with his career. Isn't it wonderful? I really From love theater, it. He's actually about to be on stage. Hopefully I'll mm -hmm. check out that. Uh, he's doing um, a play called Privacy, which sounds really interesting. Privacy or is, pri I believe, how it's... <laughs> Privacy. How it's pronounced. Privacy. Yeah. Privacy. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's going to be, I think that's like at the public theater. It's mm -hmm. like a, a smaller scale thing. But um, uh, well, yeah. You know what else started at the public theater? What's that? Hamilton. Haven't heard of it. All right. <laughs> How many times have you seen Hamilton? I've only seen it twice. You've seen it twice? Before. You are privileged. But I haven't seen it since it's been a year. I haven't seen it since last August. Did, I haven't uh, seen it since was, everyone else started to watch it. Was Lin-Manuel in both productions? Yes. 
Was he amazing? Yeah. Because I've heard that, like, the understudy is just I've those... never seen... I'm seeing the understudy coming up. Oh, my God. You're seeing it for a third time. Yeah. Wow. I am. That's Josh, I'm amazing. passionate. I would love to see it. Look, all I'm saying is... You saw is, Mad Max 700 times. Well, I, I would I would see Hamilton 700 times if it I was 10 you, bucks a ticket. Well, I told you about Hamilton a year ago. Yeah. And it's like, no one cares until... You only cared once Beyonce went. Then you were like, oh, now I care about Hamilton. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Um, why are we talking about Hamilton? And everyone's talking about Hamilton. They don't Anna need Kendrick a, probably loves Hamilton. I feel like we've probably talked about Hamilton at some yeah, point. You but, probably lied and said you saw it. No, I <laughs> Truthful, I own up to my 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 sad you probably life. Probably asked her for tickets. <laughs> Give me tickets. That's why I keep bringing her back. I'm yeah. waiting for her to offer. Yeah, for Hasn't no happened reason. Yet. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah. you seem like a guy who would love Hamilton. Josh. <laughs> Enough about Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Anna Kendrick. I know you will. I'm yeah. talking to you, Sammy, but I'm also talking to America because it is America's birthday, yeah. and I'm talking to the world. Yeah, not just America. No. Everyone out there. <laughs> yeah, every, if you're not from America, ignore the first couple seconds where Josh says Happy July Fourth, and then press play. <laughs> they can still have a Happy July Fourth. No. It's different. It's for the whole world. All right. Uh, Happy Second Fused is a is a global show. I've always <laughs> said that from the beginning. Uh, hello, Netherlands. They love me in the Netherlands. <laughs> they probably they, do. They, they, I'm worshipped as a god there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe. Um, enough about the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Here's Anna Kendrick. Yay! She's so wee. I can't believe she performed music right when you hit stopped. <laughs> stopped yeah, she did a full on one woman show. It was yeah. Trust me, guys, it was amazing. Oh, it was so good. But this is good too. <laughs> Bye. Ms. Kendrick right, will see you is now. Is this just recycling or is this? That's anything you want it to be. Great. Welcome. Great. Have Hello. a seat, Anna. How's it going? So good to see you. Oh, were you reading the choice? And yeah, why are you judging me? You? Yeah, we were going to read to each other. I think that was <laughs> oh, the, great. You weren't told that the podcast was taking a turn. We're Have you ever read things. a Nicholas Sparks novel? No. Have you? No. no. I'm not judging. I mean, they, I'm sure they're I'm sure they're very reads. engrossing. Yeah. Yeah. How are going to do? Oh, yeah. Stephanie laughed. Oh, yeah. My brother, a budding Donald Trump, right? Actually, he doesn't care much about money and never has. I mean, sure, he earns a living and pays his own way, but anything left over goes to new boats or jet skis or trips here and there. It seems like he's been everywhere. Europe, Central and Central and South America, Australia, Africa, Bali, China, Nepal. Really? You sound surprised. I guess I am. Wait, wait. Who says <laughs> it seems like he's been everywhere? Europe, Central and South America? Like, I understand saying that in like a speech, right? But your Europe, Central and South America, that's not in how you casual talk? conversation, yeah, like yeah. Central America, South. I've America. I've seen the world. I've seen South America and Central America. But I would say it's South America and Central America, <laughs> not Central, both Central and South America. For it's those, just such a written thing. For those just tuning in, that's Anna Kendrick criticizing Nicholas Sparks. Criticizing the great Nicholas Sparks. Oh my God! I know, <laughs> I know, and I just like just because you've written I one know, book now. I know, come I know. That's yet. what I'm thinking. I literally just handed in like my final, final draft, and here I am with the audacity <laughs> to criticize. Is something like that. No, no. The audacity. The audacity of Kendrick. That's the name. The new name of the book, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry that we're off and running. We had no pleasantries. It's good to see you, my friend. It's so my good friend. to see you. Um, I thought that w that was just implied. It's so. It's always good to see you. <laughs> is it? Okay. Well, that's nice to hear. Um, how's it going? Um, it's going really well. Give me a status report. It's been like I feel like a month or two since yeah. I've seen you. Uh, I like went into a writing hole. Yeah. Um, trying to figure out. How to finish the book. Um, I'm never going to write again. I don't want that to be like a, like, it's not like I'm not proud of the book or, it's just you know, hard. I, yeah, it's like, it's one of those things where I feel like it, y y you have to be careful about saying that because it makes it sound like reading it's going to be an <laughs> unpleasant experience or something, right. which is just it's not. Like, it's like Melville. It's like reading Moby Dick is going to be like it's reading like, your book. It's actually, the, I think, like, the contrast is the thing that surprised me that, like, the book is so light and fun right. and all I ever wanted it to be was just, like, something entertaining. Yeah. And the fact that, like, it drove me to distraction is, like, just ironic, you know? It's like if I wanted to run a marathon, I would expect to be miserable and grumpy, right. but. But a light, you know. frothy book is yeah. killing you. A light, frothy book. <laughs> yeah. Just a summer, just a summer read. I mean, it's coming out in the fall, but that's right. It's coming out in <laughs> Paperback in the summer. <laughs> Paperback in the summer, maybe, yeah. So have you, so you've delivered the final or a draft? Yeah, or the it's final, like... ex except the final, I'm learning is never the final. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait, you need punctuation? What? <laughs> 
you, yeah, you read like, it all in free verse. I, they've been sort of threatening the word final for a long time. So I think it's final and like it's in the copy edit phase, oh. which does mean I'm allowed to still change stuff. Like they would really prefer that I not change a lot, but I'm still allowed right. to like switch out jokes and stuff, which is where I get into like crazy zone where I'm like calling up friends being like, say, which is funnier? <laughs> like it's it's hotter than a monkey's ass or hotter than a, like, you know, just I'm, I don't have any jokes like that, but. Um, you should add a monkey's ass like, joke. So that's, that's not ass. Nicholas Sparks you loves gotta, a good monkey's ass you gotta, analogy. Uh, go low brow, you know. <laughs> go blue, monkey's asshole. If you want some of that Fifty Shades uh, uh, green. Oh yeah, shit. <laughs> there needs uh, to be more uh, more sex and nudity in your book. There's there is a section called nudity. So there you go. Sold. And there are. There, I, I am there actually, there actually, <laughs> um, there's a section where I like, uh, I was told I was allowed to like not make my decision just yet, even though t I was told it was the final draft, um, where I'm like debating between using sort of euphemisms yes. or saying the actual thing okay. in a section about, you know, an X, okay. um, so an X or two. So, uh, I, I'm, I think I'm probably just going to like close my eyes and say like, just say the real stuff, but I. I obviously but like, then you're gonna have to read the book you're gonna have to do that I'm gonna have to send my my mother and father a copy that's like specially like redacted <laughs> it's gonna look like uh, the Pentagon like the papers, or something. papers exactly. or something Jesus <laughs> they're not ready for those words they don't even understand what they mean no I mean I you know you I came as from far, a stork. as far as they're concerned yeah <laughs> uh, until I'm pregnant I've never had sex <laughs> Um, well, I'm very excited to read the book. Thank you. Um, you should feel very proud. This is an accomplishment. It's huge. Thanks. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's strange, man. I don't yeah. know. It's also weird because I feel like when people ask me what I've been up to, I don't have a lot to say because right. all I've been doing is t like writing about myself, yeah. like my experiences. <laughs> it's healthy. Um, which is weird. Yeah. And then event like in the fall, yeah. I'm going to have to promote the book, which means I'm going to be talking about myself, writing about myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I might end up biting a reporter by the end <laughs> of just losing it and going like feral maybe cat. I'll, maybe I'll skip you on that press tour. <laughs> 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 I don't want to die. Um, I don't want rabies for Matt Kendrick. Um, so uh, here's I'm, I'm a little concerned about you. Oh. Wait, are we getting serious? No, of course not. <laughs> but no, I was because uh, as we were as we were sitting down to talk today, I was like, okay, what sixteen projects does she have coming up next? I don't see anything that you're like actually anything? shooting well, next. Well, I I I feel like maybe we we. Uh, uh, Have you stumbled great, into we a? We raised this subject the last time we talked, but yeah. it was um, the fact that Pitch Perfect was supposed to shoot right, at right, the right. beginning of the year, and now it's going to shoot in the fall. So, but they keep pushing it back in these like month increments. Right. The way that like when you're on a plane, they're like, ah, it's just going to be another 15 minutes, <laughs> and like it's two hours, and they know it's going to be two hours, but they oh, tell yeah. you like Head every games. 15 minutes. Yeah. So, um, so I haven't been able to do anything else, which does mean that I have been like climbing up the walls. Yeah. Because uh, yes, I am. You crave structure. You I crave do. work. I crave. You're a crazy structure. person that way. I crave a schedule and um, like a, a call time and stuff. <laughs> uh, it is it is a weird thing to be living in the chaos of like not working and sort of like writing and so i've had to like set um like alarms and lunch times for myself like i'm my own tyrannical boss <laughs> so yeah because I, I i myself i'm someone that needs like way too much to do in order to like be happy because yeah. if i have too much time i just don't i just sit well, and I'm, do nothing I'm, I'm worried about that but i gotta tell you i am more worried about being really happy <laughs> with time <laughs> oh, no. off because i've handed in the book right and now like you know pitch a little press isn't a little, gonna, little press, little yeah. press um, but pitch isn't going to shoot until like September. Right. Uh, so I'm actually like a little bit worried that I'm going to be like, oh, why would I do more than one movie a year? That is crazy. Right. Um, you could go Daniel Day-Lewis on us. You could suddenly yeah, start to get like, you know, a little do, selective. Like, create, uh, open uh, a shoe cobblery. Should... Is, that, is that the correct uh, verbiage? <laughs> I think it was called Dan's Cob Cobblery was yeah, the yeah, store yeah. that he opened great, in great. Italy, right? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Uh, I am slightly concerned that I'm going to get really into like gardening, right? And um, you know, TV shows and stuff. <laughs> well, you've already done that. TV shows, yeah, yeah. I it um, just might add more to the repertoire now. Wait, you mean doing TV shows? I'm or saying watching. A watching. TV oh, watching TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Uh, yeah, there's a, like I've never watched The Americans. It's supposed to be really good. It is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, you watched Game of Thrones last night. 
No, you don't remember this. I don't watch Game of Thrones. We always talk about this. You're obsessed. I've never seen it. It's insane. And yet, every time I come in, I'm like, that can't I know, be true. I know, and you're having that a stroke again. Right. It doesn't make any sense. That I know. can't be right. I must be mistaken, and we're going to talk about Game of Thrones. So this is anyway. so this is going to run after the finale, which I think is next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, apparently, so can you believe that thing that oh happened my, on the finale happened say. on the finale? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, watching as I do on the Twitter sphere every Sunday night, I did. I made a stupid joke last night. Like, like the generic tweet is always like, "Oh my God, can you believe what happened?" Gonna take me a while to process that one. Like, I mean, that basically seems to be the pattern every week of Game of Thrones. Yeah, a little bit, but I do feel like there was actually. Uh, I hope I'm not like being really shady right now. Okay. But there was an episode this season which was. I think everyone agreed was a little subpar. Okay. It just was one of those episodes hey. where everyone went, well, that, I, I don't know. So every, like something in every scene felt a little like, that was weird. Right. But I swear, I think that they got to the point where we're so used to high quality yes. that they had to do one where like, Remember, even, this is like how... even the camera moves felt too <laughs> deliberate. And right. Like, they, they were holding on things. Like the editing felt a little sloppy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Like, if everybody like thinks of it like that, or if they just feel like, oh, that something about that episode was a little off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like they just had to throw one in to be like, yeah, this is what most TV shows feel like. Remember normal TV? Right. It's not TV. It's HBO. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, Nicholas Sparks, you've already shot on I his know. writing. Oh my God, what's wrong with Game you of today? Thrones? Kind of a lesser show. You're saying sometimes. No. They, sometimes they just tank oh it. You're God. saying no. I'm not Gosh. putting words in your mouth, but you're saying sometimes they just throw it uh, away. No. I'm saying it would be a br- <laughs> it would it would be a brilliant strategical yes. move on their part mm-hmm. to have like one episode a season yes. that was just a little like a like, like a like very a, like a good, good normal season. TV yes. show to remind you how great to it is to remind you that every other episode they just bring it to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. So I thought you should. I was gonna say you're 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 by the way the first. Uh, you know how SNL has like the five timer club of hosts. Uh, oh, uh, you're the first threefer on Happy, Sad, Confused. Wow. You're the, I don't know I, if that's a badge I, of honor or I if it's. I feel like okay. I'm pr- I'm processing that. Uh, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna decide to feel really good about. No, it. I don't feel your face isn't saying that. Your your mouth is saying that, but your face is well, saying, no, seems really I sad. Just, well, it I it hadn't occurred to me that that could be the case. So now I just feel like, oh, am I just up in your grill all no, the time? No, that's not it at all. Here's the thing: uh, only in the last six months have we started taking uh, guests on repeat. A, a repeat guest, and okay. I didn't want to for a while. And then I was like, oh, I might as well if I like people and they like me and we have a good time, whatever. And then it just so happens you've had a couple of movies in the last few months. That's oh, all. That's all. Okay. Okay. But I we're like gonna that. need to take a little bit of a break. Yeah. Yeah, enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sure the accountant will sell, sell tickets without me. Oh yeah. You, Did you see that thing? Yes. Um, I mean, I saw you tweeted it. I tweeted I, it as well. This, I, so for context, for, for context, um, there is a video <laughs> that someone must have just unearthed. Like it, it must have just been around for the last ten years, yeah. and someone just unearthed it and tweeted it. And this person who's got like 600 followers or something like that. That video is up to like 16,000 retweets or something. As it should. They just found like this one section of Ben Affleck's commentary of Armageddon. <laughs> and I'm like, no joke, I yeah. have watched it four times and like howled with laughter. It's amazing. It's delightful. He's kind of being pr- brutally honest about Michael Bay as people should. Yes. And, uh, Oh God, Affleck! I mean, you know, you've worked with him. He's yeah. a smart, funny he's guy. He's a smart, funny guy. Like, like that's what I love about it is that he's being sort of a smarty pants. Yes, and like <laughs> kind of like loving that he's being a little clever. It's so great. Um, there, I, I'm trying to think of there are a couple because com- I used to like love directors' commentaries and actors' commentaries on DVDs for a while when people still bought DVDs. There was a really good. Oh, here's a good one. I don't know if you, you ever will have the desire. You probably won't. But if you want to go down the rabbit hole, the um. Arnold Schwarzenegger did a great commentary for Conan the Barbarian. I've heard about this one, but it's a little bit more like the appeal is more like The Room. Yes. The, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's him and John Milius, who's also like this like super masculine, crazy dude. And it's, yeah, I mean, I don't know if they'd realize that they're being funny right. or not. Right. Um, also, I always enjoy the Kurt Russell, John Carpenter commentaries on all those movies that they did together. Oh. Big Trouble in Little China and The Thing. Those Ooh, are good. Ooh, okay. Have you done commentary stuff? I have done only one commentary and it was my dream to do a commentary because yeah. I love listening to commentaries. And I did one for Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Nice. And I have not done one since. Um, I think I had an offer to do one for Mike and Dave and I was busy and I also felt like do people still 
That's my thing. I yeah, don't know if people I don't do. Know if people still listen to commentaries, they should. They're really fun. I know fun. they're so fun. Uh, and with that group, that's a fun group. That is a fun we're, group. We're going to be talking a bunch uh, about Mike and Dave. We're going to go off to the uh, fun Apple Store for additional chit chat about this. Very, it's a very funny movie. Thank it you. It really is. It's funny. I'm like, I'm not the lead of the movie. It's like four. It's like a four hander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like I'm allowed to be like, it's, re it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> like my name's not yes, in the title. I'm not like Mike really or Dave. Funny. I'm allowed to say it's I'm good. Not, yes, I'm not Mike or Dave. So. <laughs> Um, but uh, oh, here's what I was going to ask. Uh, if you were to start a podcast, what do you feel you have expertise in? Game of Thrones. You could certainly do a Game of Thrones podcast. I could do Game of Thrones. Um, it's funny because um, I feel like I would get myself in a lot of trouble on a Game of Thrones. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I very, very much enjoy uh, After the Throne. Yes. Is, the, is that the uh, HBO I, official yeah, thing the they H do? The, yeah. yeah uh, I, I think it's After the Thrones. Anyway. Um, Everything and they have like experts show, come yeah. on and talk about context, um, you know, for non-book readers, and, sure. and it's so fascinating. It's great. Um, but I also go on Reddit Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. um, and it's so interesting to me. I feel like sometimes, you know, uh, I am of the same opinion as a lot of the the users who post on Game of Thrones on Reddit, but sometimes. Um, like there was one thing where people were like, oh, that performance, that was so great. And I wanted to be like, you're just responding to the camera move. It's not like, which right. is like, I don't need to do that. I don't need right. to get myself in trouble. Well, like, why do I need to do that? You're an insider perspective. You can give some context for those folks that aren't thinking about things like that, that you're in the know. So basically, it's just what would I be a real pedant about? <laughs> and I should do a podcast if that everyone will hate and I'll ruin my own career. If we've discovered nothing in the first 10 minutes of this conversation, it's you're at your best when you're you're saying horrible things about other people. That's true. Just embrace it. Okay. I have. I've made a career out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Join me to the in the dark side. Um, so okay, so you're 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 about to perhaps have, have some time off while you wait for the Pitch Perfect three thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you one of those actors that like daydreams about like you know opening up your own general store or becoming like a neurosurgeon in your spare time or? Um. I. Uh, I really like I went through a period where I really loved baking and I uh, like mentioned it sort of in passing in the book and I was thinking about it and I really want to get back into it so I had like uh, I was reorganizing reorganizing my kitchen and I was like opening all my cookbooks and like remarking my favorite recipes and there's like a flourless chocolate hazelnut tort with a spiced caramel sauce that I cannot find the recipe for. So right. I'm in a small panic about this. Oh my this. God, I am too. Um, I know, as you should be. Um, <laughs> but I really do want to get back into um, the baking, baking world. world. Yeah. What's your, what's your what's your best dish? What's the signature? What's the Kendrick? The signature well, Kendrick? The, I, I mean, I definitely remember the, the hazelnut tort uh, going down well, but there are, I think like, it's not the most elegant dish, but okay. people really like come back for it and request it. Is just these like peanut butter oatmeal squares that are very like you know Betty Crocker kind of potluck hey. passed down recipe. Right, right, like, right. There's Crisco in it. <laughs> <laughs> they still make and sell Crisco. So good. I hope so. <laughs> you stockpiled. You went to Costco. You're like, give me all the rest of it. I need it. <laughs> yes, for my earthquake preparedness. <laughs> It's so the yes. 10 Cloverfield Wayne sequel you won't ever see. Yeah. Anna just baking oatmeal squares. Yeah. It could be the tastiest <laughs> bunker ever. We get so fat in that bunker. It could be the popular bunker. And when the, when the shit hits the fan, everyone's going to want to get into that yeah. bunker. Seems wrong. <laughs> um, so, okay. So... <laughs> So uh, what's uh, what's with Pitch Perfect right now? So we don't even know who's who's directing it, right? Are you going to be directing it? Have you decided to throw your head at in, in the ring? Um, uh, I think you know we all have our fingers crossed that a certain person will come back to the uh, the franchise once again. Right. Um, Is it rhyme with Mason Bohr? It does, uh, <laughs> but um, you know. Uh, I, I'm not behind the curtain on this particular thing, so. Okay. So at this point, um, you know, we, we, we've, we've talked a lot about sort of like the exciting opportunities you've had in recent years, et cetera, and it seems like the world is at Anna Kendrick's feet, yada, I mean, yada. that's how I feel. Right? <laughs> Every day you wake up, you're like, I, I did anything. it. <laughs> but are there frustrations? Are there, are there career frustrations at this point, do you feel like? what? Because you can't be possibly just blissfully happy. Yeah, no, that's not really in my emotional range. Blissfully happy, so <laughs> you've you've hit the nail on the head. But um, but I was thinking recently that uh, you know, 
there like no one will ever be totally satisfied and like if you have any ambition at all you it just is a right. it's like a it's a sort of never ending fuel i guess but at the same time like there are so many talented women in the industry right now who are around my age and yeah. i feel so grateful to be in this like generation of actresses who are just like just blowing the game up. Sure. They're so good. And the fact that I have like carved out a corner of the w world in that space is amazing. Yeah. Like so in a way it's like who am I to say that like I wish this or I want that when right. like I am in the company of such amazing talents. Like so there's never a moment where I'm like really her? Like right. that's not even it. It's just I I I feel like I should be counting my blessings that like in that in this uh excess of talent that like you're still I'm getting part up pretty, of the conversation yeah, yeah. it's so great so you're saying you, you didn't like punch your fist through a wall when brie larson got captain marvel oh my god did she i didn't even know that <laughs> i don't know if it's official but it sounds like she's oh gonna, that's amazing i mean that like cool? brie but brie is someone because i worked with her in scott pilgrim course, yeah. brie is someone who like for years i've been like when is this girl gonna blow up like yeah. what's like i i'm just like looking over my shoulder like how am i not like and then it seemed like right how like is she not the biggest thing in the world and then it happened and i was like well there you go well then it was like like what like three or four years ago and, and short term 12 happened and everyone's yeah. like okay this is it and then yeah. it didn't kind of happen yeah. and you're like oh shit like what do you need to do yeah that yeah i mean that in the same kind of way that you you experienced with like your early kind of sundance successes that yeah. like were were seen by industry people, but like exactly. nobody actually exactly. That's saw them. Exactly right. Yeah, like Rocket Science was seen by industry people. Short Term Twelve was seen by industry people. Right. And yeah, it's like it's always kind of the next one and the next one that yeah. is the one. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, Brie is just like gonna set the world on fire. Totally. She's so fucking talented. I can't yeah. stand it. Um. So her head is spinning. You can't see it, but she's like literally actually angry how talented she is, <laughs> <laughs> turning red. No. Um. So what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Uh, well, one thing that's struck me like in terms of like the opportunities you've had and the kind of films you've had and i guess this came up probably when you did it into the woods is like that's like the only film i can think of in recent memory where you've like it's kind of a period or kind of like something that's you've done a lot of contemporary roles yeah you're kind of like like kate winslet was corset woman for yeah, years and you're kind of contemporary is, is that does that feel like not to create like a uh, a limitation <laughs> for you like but but like does it feel like that is, are there certain contexts you don't even see yourself well, I in? I do think when you're American, uh, generally speaking, people um, are more comfortable casting Brits in uh, period pieces when it's British. And sure. even when it's American, it seems like they would rather cast, both male and female, they would rather kind of cast Brits and yeah. have them do an early American accent. Yeah. Um, uh, which, does Kate Winslet do an American accent in Titanic? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I yeah, mean, like, right? as, yeah. So, yeah. example number one. Yeah, she does. Um, and it's just because it just seems like they are, um, uh, you know, that they have this like lineage that dates yes. back and back. And Americans just seem very like hopelessly young and uh, <laughs> just came from the mall. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Ho like hopelessly contemporary as a nation. Right. So <laughs> I do think that like there's a there's a thing where we lack a certain credibility. Almost. Yes. Um, but uh, but you don't see that yourself that that for yourself. You obviously can. Yeah, you know. yeah. Um, but uh, but I do feel like by the same token, I think that a, they must, you know, British women must face that thing where people don't see them in comedies, like right. even if they're really funny, like uh, uh, like Kate Beckinsdale is someone who I've never seen her in a comedy, but I met right. her and I was like. You're like the funniest person I've ever encountered. Yeah, I've noticed that. She's, so she's I mean, for, but I, for all I know, she's like, I don't want to do comedy. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. But it, but it did make me think. Like, oh, I wonder if some girls have the opposite thing, where like they're right. like, I just want to be like, in the current time period, like yes. with a baby working a job, figuring it out, or whatever they want. Right. She's stuck in leather fighting vampires every. Three yeah, it must years. be tough. It must be tough. <laughs> yeah. Although that new movie, apparently, that what Stillman movie she's in is apparently really good. Love and Friendship. Oh yeah, I've heard that's really. And good. supposed to be really funny too, actually. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, are, are there kinds of are there kinds of films that you appreciate that you don't necessarily see yourself wanting to be in? Like, I mean, we talk about like Game of Thrones or or, you know, we've talked ad nauseum over the years about Lord of the Rings, et cetera. Like, are those kind of, those kinds of things, things you just love so much from a distance that you almost don't want to see yourself in? Or? Well, I mean, this is a very specific example because I wouldn't say that it's a genre in and of itself. Not that it couldn't be, but like. Maybe just right now it isn't. I was watching Sons of Anarchy, <laughs> and um, Katie Seagal mm -hmm. uh, is like at the beginning of the series. She does this line where she's like, "I just want to make sure that my son is following in the right father's footsteps." 
<laughs> and like it's this really bold choice that she makes to kind of draw. I'm I'm doing a terrible yeah, impression of it. Right. It's like very kind of scary and like right. you know compelling. But um, but then they keep showing it uh, as as a previously on so that you know like what has happened. Yep. And I was just thinking like I would just never make that <laughs> choice. Like and so it's not like biker genre is a genre, but just that kind of like <laughs> you know that that like tough matriarch mm -hmm. role is just like a Jackie Weaver in, in yeah, Animal, Animal Kingdom, Kingdom kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, I just think, you know, it would be the kind of thing that I would want to like push myself to do, but I would really have to have a great director right. on my side because otherwise I would be like, I just want to make sure you're following the right father's footsteps. I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't take yourself seriously, yeah. you need someone else to put, uh, instill the confidence in you, yeah. right? Darren Aronoff's going to be like, no, you can you, do it. You got it. I'm terrified of you. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, who's your favorite filmmaker right now? Oh, right now, I don't know. Um, or, or going back, when you were growing up, did you have like, who's the first filmmaker you geeked out on and like went back and watched all of their stuff and that kind of a thing? Uh, when I was younger, like when I was probably too young, I saw Boogie Nights. Like when I was like 12, I saw Boogie Nights. Right. So uh, <laughs> I like really enjoyed watching Paul Thomas Anderson do his thing. Yeah. Um, but when I was like 19 or 20, um, I got really into Bergman. Um, I, I just like think that there's just no one who can really touch that. And like, right. I mean, admittedly, like I went through um, like, uh, you know, certain like certain like Italian filmmakers and, you know, French New Wave, like maybe too quickly, like because right. I, I was just like, what's this all about? What's going yeah. on here? Uh, and uh, but I definitely left feeling like a ah, true foe. Schmoof. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, how do I? Um, which is obviously, I mean, that's obviously an exaggeration, but yes. like, you know, Bergman could just eat everybody alive, is well, my feeling. It's it's tough too, because like, you know, even like, uh, you know, a self professed like film geek like myself, it's like I have huge like holes in my knowledge. Oh, God, me too. Like, God. I mean, like Asian cinema, like, don't even get yeah. me started. And I feel like an idiot because like, it, it's just like, it's endless. And it's, it's, it's where do you begin? And there's not enough time did, and you're keeping I, up with everything. I, 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 when I was like 25, I, I tried to um, explore a little more Asian cinema and I felt like, even watching like a couple films, um, I mean, like I have seen like Rashomon and like you right, know, right. I, there, but uh, some Kurosawa, but some basically like, yeah. everything outside of Kurosawa I right. hadn't seen. So uh, I watched a couple films and I was like, oh, I don't get this. This is not for me, and I need to like research a little bit of context for me to even right. be able to appreciate this. Like I really felt like, oh, I'm too stupid to get this at the moment. <laughs> um, I can't remember the name of the film, but it is like one of the most famous, like, uh, You're like I acknowledge cinema. this is and probably good. Like, I'm just not there I yet. Literally, to <laughs> like I have, there is no doubt in my mind that like, this is not good enough for me. Like that is obviously not what's happening. Yeah. I was like, I'm not good enough for this film yet. I need to revisit this <laughs> later. <laughs> do you ever, do you ever go to, I mean, Ellie's much better, frankly, than New York with re revival houses. Do you ever get a chance to go to stuff? Um, yeah. Well, I used to go to New Beverly and silent movie theater a lot. Uh, I, the last, few years has have been harder i've just you know uh you're working lady. My, yeah my life is uh the atlanta revival houses aren't as good if you're <laughs> shooting there etc yeah um but uh i do miss that because they put on some amazing programming um like i remember going to see like my favorite programming at silent movie theater they did um an evening of bizarre and inappropriate children's cartoons amazing and they just compiled like all of the children's cartoons from uh you know from everywhere from like the 20s to the 80s that made animators go what um <laughs> so uh everything from stuff that didn't make sense to stuff that was like really domestic violency oh, and no. like just That's like crazy. why is this for children <laughs> this is so this alarming. needs to be burned right now but it was so much fun like i'm so happy because here in new york they, they i don't know if you heard they, they've opened a place on the lower east side called the metrograph like we really have not had a legit like revival house that's open in new york that like actually shows stuff on the regular in years and like they're showing all brian de palma's movies right now yeah. it's like it's it's like a, we need that yeah you need that kind of resource yeah de palma is uh what do you think of de palma de, oh <laughs> here i go um i mean de palma is one of the one of the ones where uh i had to like go back and revisit like dress to kill yes. that kind of stuff because i was like i don't what's happening right like what's happening and then like uh 
kind of had to like go back and be like, okay, I get it, I get it. Like, yeah, well, he, he's an interesting one. There's that cool new doc about him. Um, so much split focus lens. Yes. So much split focus A lot lens. of that. And some of the stuff, frankly, is like, I mean, look, Dress the Kill, like the, the serial killer is like a cross-dresser, which yes. frankly is not, doesn't feel really appropriate yeah. in 2016. And, you know, he's definitely been accused of misogyny mm-hmm. and, and there, some of that probably is valid. But in terms of filmmaking technique, he really... I mean, I would say, and he would probably agree, is like the heir to Hitchcock. He really like studied. It's, it's tricky because, like, when when you're looking at like film history, when it's like Dario Argento or Brian De Palma, it's like I have to try yeah. to uh, put out of my mind the like. Uh, you know, the sexism issue and the feminist issue and go, this is a person acknowledging his most base instincts. Yes. Um, and if what he wants in his, you know, primal self is to strangle women with a black glove, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like I would rather that that exist in the world and that I know that yes. that is, the, you know, that 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 is his artistic expression of his most, like, um, animal self, mm-hmm. like, rather than go... I wish this didn't exist. So it's, okay. you know, when there are themes in films that are a little uh, uh, squicky, is a technical <laughs> term. <laughs> so, um, it's a film comment uh, official. Yeah, squicky. I, yeah, I just, you just try to go like, okay, this is like, um, this is a part of who we are as a culture. So. Right. Um, I'm curious. Uh, this always occurs to me, like you know, when, when I when I meet people, especially like at junkets, when I used to do more of junkets and stuff, um, the impulse when I'm talking to somebody, and this is kind of random, but like when I see an actor, um, is to kind of like validate the film that they're promoting, etc. Right? Like, I mean, you just if it's like it's just common decency to sure, be like congratulations, sure. like, oh, etc. Oh, I can't wait to yeah. see or whatever. Yeah. You, but I'm curious, like from your perspective, like when you see someone you know, like you run into an actor that's like promoting something, like do you? Do you invariably compliment them on something, even if maybe you didn't like it? Does that like what? Uh, like someone like that I have a relationship with already, or like we're meeting for the first time, and there's that mutual like, oh, I know you. No, I'm, think, I'm thinking more of somebody you actually somebody know. Somebody I actually know. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, in that case, yeah, I would definitely say like you it's, know, it's part of the deal. You just have to yeah, kind of like whatever it is, it looks great. Right. I mean, particularly with like directors, right? You want to do that. <laughs> This is a good tip for <laughs> inspiring actors out there. Well, you no, love Brian De Palma. Your latest work was no, amazing. Oh my God. No, um, uh, I just ran into uh, Stephen Merchant, and we were talking about um, that problem when someone, a friend, wants to screen a movie for you yes. before it's finished, yeah. and you never know if they're in that phase where, like, right. they've done everything that they feel they can do. Like, do you do, actually and want really, constructive criticism, really or do you want just need people to go like it's great because at this point yes, there's nothing they late. can do about it. So, like, why would you, you know? Or if they're in that point where they want notes because they yeah. they want you to be helpful, or if they're in that point where they're saying they want notes and really but they, no, they do just not, validate me, do not want. <laughs> so, um, what about for you? Have you been in that case where you've shown somebody? I mean, you're obviously not directing something yourself, but you've probably been in situations where you've had friends or, or family see something early. What are you looking for? In all honesty, um, I am not great about seeing my films until they're pretty much finished, yeah. um, which is a kind of a catch-22 because at that point, if you do have a suggestion, it's kind of too late. Yeah. But I find that, uh, I don't know why, like I can watch other movies when they're not finished and go, oh, I see how this, yeah, and that scene's gonna get tightened up right. and this will, and when it's my films, I'm just like, well, it's awful. It's, I don't, I, I just can't get past it. And right. then I'm like, well, it's an unmitigated disaster. Yeah. And, like. Um, At least if you're seeing the finished product, you're like resigned like, oh, to the fact. Mo- it's, no, it's, it's not even that. It's like if it's the finished product, I'm like, oh, it's a movie. Yes. And when it's not and I'm in it, I can't shake that feeling that like, oh, this isn't a real movie. Like, right. who am I? And what? like just that perpetual feeling of like, why would anybody let me be in a movie? So obviously, like, it's not like a real right. movie. It's like a student film <laughs> or something like. Um, so uh, but uh, I, I don't know. uh that I've had like quite that experience. So I am certainly not one to say that like I wouldn't be the guy who was like, give me notes and right. then be just like, well, what the fuck do you do? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I can definitely understand yeah. like just wanting someone to be like, it's great. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. Um, more importantly, the the sight gag of you and Stephen Merchant must have been wonderful. Oh, it is so Th- The man is like fabulous. 12 feet tall. He's 12 Hysterical. Feet tall. And um, yeah, I felt like we did this movie together and that's going to come out next year. Mm-hmm. And it, 
it definitely felt like a wasted opportunity to not have like a big sight gaggy moment. But the uh, other two guys in the film were pretty tall, like not Stephen Merchant tall because right. no one is. No. Um, but they were quite tall, so I was in massive shoes for most of the movie, and um, we didn't really want to make it look like I was the like, you know, the uh, Hobbit. E- thing. Even though I am kind of the Hobbit. No, no, no. Um, so we uh, we never made like a specific joke out of it, but right. I mean, like I could just stare at Steve's face on camera all day. I know. He's just like so lovely and wonderful. Genius, genius. Uh, yeah, he needs. To, has he directed films himself yet? He. Uh, I know that he's directed a lot of Hello Ladies. Yes. But I, I actually don't know. I'll bet you he has, and I'm a jerk, and I don't, and I don't well, know. You're not a jerk. He just needs to do more of it. Yeah. Um. So the writing process that you've just completed, and maybe you'll do a little bit of rewriting if they make you and add, <laughs> add commas and apostrophes, etc. Um. Has that sparked? I mean, it sounds like it's it's tough. It's it's not it's not an easy thing. But is that feel related at all to any other kind of writing? Have you dabbled in screenwriting? Is that something that you want to do? I haven't. And Edgar always encouraged me to do that. And I just I find reading screenplays so boring that um, even though like uh, you know it's obviously part of my life it, it's it's just unfortunate that reading screenplays is why, why is that it's just like you're not seeing like it it's just like the bare feels... bones of like I wish you could have like a novelized version of like a screenplay you should it's ask some friends like to come over and act in, it out for you like the, it's uh, it feels incredibly like non-descriptive and then suddenly there'll be a moment where they're like a fight ensues it's the craziest fight you've ever seen and you're like is it gonna be how do you plan to accomplish that promise just, pinky swear just writing it on paper doesn't make it so um so it's just that that weird combination of those two elements and um and yeah i don't even know like where i would yeah. begin with that and directing, have we talked about this in terms of directing aspirations? Or no, that... I, I'm I'm not great with camera. I'm getting better, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm uh, I'm not great with visualizing. Even even like still frames, I'm not great visualizing it uh, before I can right. basically see the finished product. Um, so I think uh, I I would feel uh, I have worked with directors who are not great with camera and are better with actors and. I feel like you can't help but feel like you're not you're doing half a job. Yeah. So that's why I would be hesitant. I would want to be really confident with camera before I did that. So it, it, yeah, because that's interesting. Because like yeah, you've I've talked to all, all types of directors, and some are you know own up to the fact that they're you know they really just enjoy most of the the process of working with actors, and some rely on the DP. And if you mm-hmm. surround yourself with the right people, it, it can look it can look great. But is it just kind of a trust thing? It's like if you don't if you're the guy or woman that doesn't really know. The shot. Why should I put my trust in you? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you, as an actor, if you really trust the director and you really trust the DP, you're like, well, you guys have got it covered. Yeah, it's yeah. just, um, you know, there's just not always necessarily that, and it doesn't mean that, like, because DPs can be a little cold. So right. like sometimes they could be the best in the world at their job, but they're just they're not going like, to explain it to you. Yeah, or, they're or... not like touchy feely the way that you know actors are so touchy feely. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's I, I I feel like maybe maybe because I'm a lady, it feels like I I would never want to give anyone the opportunity to be like, oh well, you know, her DP, I you see. know, chose all the shots and you know picked every lens and frame and stuff. Um, right. And you know, I think the feeling that you have to work a little harder as a lady is not unique to filmmaking or anything. So, right. uh, but I but I think that might be part of it. I know what you're excited about. What am I excited You're about? You're excited about Comic-Con. I am excited about Are Comic-Con. You, I'll see you at Comic-Con, I'm sure. Um, uh, you'll be there with, uh, I assume, Mr. Timberlake. Maybe, perhaps he'll be showing up, too, for Trolls. Is that yeah, the, the idea? So, yeah, I think so, yeah. So uh, when's the last time? Not, it wasn't Scott Again, Pilgrim. I was not like going to... I didn't think I was going to be able to go until recently because Pitch yeah. pushed again. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm going. I'm was excited. Scott Pilgrim the last time? It couldn't have been. You, no, it was Scott Pilgrim. I went with Paranorman and End of Watch, weirdly, oh, was yeah. one that went to Comic-Con. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Was, I feel like it There's I, probably I must have gone one. more recently. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, well, that'll be fun. You uh, uh, had a good time in Cannes. I heard you were a little under the weather when you were singing, I was, right? I was so sick in Cannes. And, ju- and like I had to sing True Colors, like this tender, tender right. arrangement of True Colors. And uh, with 
you know, music superstar, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> that's how you have to refer um, to him. So that's a great time to feel um, really, really sick. And uh, there was a moment right before we went on stage when Justin was, you know, pl playing the guitar and, you know, just kind of singing the song to himself. And I, even though I knew it at the time, like, he threw in this, like, a couple of little riffs. Like, and even though at the time I thought, I think he's just doing that to, like, you know, warm up his voice mm -hmm. and, you know, just, you know, shake out the cobwebs or whatever. Sure. And I was like, um, Justin, um, are you going to um, <laughs> do it like that? Because if you, I just need to know. And he was like, I'm going to do it just how we did in rehearsal. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just in such a state of panic that oh I had God. to go and sing with someone who is that famous for singing well um, that I had like a little um, a little meltdown, just a little a little panic moment. Sounds like you it know, worked just out. A, just a mini panic moment. It sounds like it, it was yeah, fine. Yeah, and it was fine. Like once we got on stage, it was fine. You get that adrenaline, yeah. and you're just like, yeah, here we go. It's gonna be great. Uh, let's wrap up with, I don't know if we've ever had time to do some random questions from an Indiana Jones fedora, but it feels... I don't think we have. How have I been on three times? I know. Well, because there's so much to usually talk about, right. but since you have no future but projects... It's my, but since it's my third time <laughs> we've run here, out. we've run out of stuff. That's, what, that's all I'm good for. It's like, not true. It's like 90 minutes of chatter. No, once I read the book, I'll know the inner you, the Wait, secrets that you've been denying me all these years. Just grab one random. Yeah. Yeah. Russell, Russell. Worst injury I've ever had. Um... I had stitches when I was, ooh, I don't know, like five or something, because my gerbil bit me on the nose. Wow, what kind of? That's was it definitely a gerbil? Was it was it, was it like a, uh, I don't know, an angry raccoon that you no, found? No, it was just little sharp teeth, mm. and I was like, "You're so cute," and I was like holding it near my face, and it bit my nose. And uh, yeah, that's the only time I've ever been to the hospital. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. But you, you're well, fine now. Well, actually, that's not true. There's another story about going to the hospital, but it's in the book, so you can read <laughs> oh, it. Oh, you've become like that. I can't ooh, believe it. Ooh, Please don't use that voice. Don't. <laughs> I'm going to use it the whole time. Uh, one or two more. Oh, great. What can you eat a ton of? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean everything. What do you what want do you... to eat a ton of? What do you uh... desire? Um, in the bunker, in the uh, mm, in the bunker with the Crisco, uh, whatever mac and cheese. Nice. Um, just vanilla cake. I feel like chocolate just is getting like a little, like a little more credit than it deserves. It's the not cho the chocolate's not great. I don't like chocolate cake. It's just like it's it's sort of everywhere. Like, yeah. And vanilla with some vanilla frosting is just it's nothing to sneeze at. No. I think the frosting is integral, though. I do, I do need a little oh, yeah. frosting in my oh, life. Yeah. Although, then you're just talking about kind of like a pound cake, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that pound cake is bad. You but. know what, uh, what? When I was a child, um, my parents, uh, for some reason, I was a very thin, tiny child, and I think they were worried they, they needed to like fatten me up. Aww. So I would like have um, uh, a Sara Lee pound cake that um, they would, dr or I think I would do it. I would drench it in chocolate syrup, and I wouldn't say drench it. It was like disgusting, Aww, like, a sponge. like like it was insane. And uh, sadly, I think it caught up with me years later. But um, but that's I have really fond memories of that disgustingness. Yeah, I recommend that to all the people trying to become diabetic out there. I definitely would eat. Uh, like we'd get those rolls of cookie dough, the oh, Pillsbury yeah. rolls of cookie dough. And my brother and I would just like lop off the top and eat it out of the tube with a spoon. Yeah, you don't need to cook it. No. It's fine. A little salmonella never killed anybody. What is this? What is this? The best vacation I've ever taken. Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like this question. Okay. Next question. Um, favorite Godfather movie. What am I, a dude? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, fine. Favorite Miss Congeniality movie. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Um, uh, don't tell me you don't like the Godfather movies. I do like the Godfather that's, movies. That's it's not just, about gender. It's just, you know, um, I think uh, Casino is the one that I was like, it's too much. Just like too I felt like a like I felt like a grandmother. I was like, it's too much it, violence. Yeah, it's, no, I hear you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I enjoy, I don't know, the, f the first one, I guess. That's what, you don't, it's don't like, be apologetic I mean, like, about I, it. I, I like them, but it's not like a movie where, if you, like, gave me three quotes, I wouldn't be able to go, like, that's from the first one, that's okay. from the second one, so, I They don't kind know. of, they, I mean, one and two, basically, they shot back to back, it yeah. feels kind of like the same thing. Yeah. Do you want to shit on Coppola before you go? Anything about what's happening to me today? I, <laughs> like, I'm just creating headlines for people to go, did Anna Gunner just throw shade? Blah, 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 blah. Throw in shade. That's the name of the book, right? That's no, Throw in Shade is the name of a podcast I enjoy. Is it really? Yeah. Well, I'll check Very it out. Okay. Um, in 20 years, I will be, uh, I don't know. Um, pitch Perfect 8. Pitch Perfect 17. <laughs> 
just rolling. <laughs> You'll money. still be waiting for the green light for three. Oh God, I'm gonna <laughs> joke about that. Um, in 20 years, I really hope to have like a lifestyle empire um, because <laughs> Wait, I'm serious? very put together. I'm very um, <laughs> stylish and in the know. Yeah. And I feel like if I created a line of bed linens, <laughs> I uh, could just change the game. Yeah. <laughs> I would purchase if there was any person I would trust with my bed linens, it would be it would you. Be me. I um know. and and vanilla you cake. Think, you think class, you think aspiration, mm -hmm. you think Anna Kendrick. There you go, guys. Yeah. I don't know what better way to end the podcast than that. Uh, Mike and Dave need wedding, need dates. wedding dates. It's, it's it's an ensemble. She doesn't have to say this, but she's saying it because she believes it, and I do too. It's, it's legit really funny. funny. It's super funny. It's really funny. Uh, July eighth. Check it out. And uh, Anna, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Until next time.